But basically, he testified in front of Congress. And here are some of the highlights of that. And I want to get your opinions yeah. on the other side of this. So he basically said right now the number one goal is to combat inflation, right? So quote unquote, Jerome Powell says the Fed has the tools and the resolve to restore price stability in America. Mm hmm. Right, We understand the hardships high inflation is causing among American citizens. We are strongly committed to bringing back down inflation. He added that GDP is picking back up. Consumption is strong. But, but the housing market is softening due to a spike in mortgage rates. Plus, future rate hikes are coming. I think they announced it, a couple more hikes throughout the, the rest of this year. They just raised it uh, 50 basis points, 75. I want to say. 75 basis points yeah. uh, a week ago, I want to say. Um, and then lastly, he says, but overall, the American economy is strong and well positioned to fight inflation. So, George, as a financial expert, yeah. would you please uh, help us make sense of what's going on here in America? Well, today? First of all, I don't know how the economy can be strong when in Q1 it contracted by 1.5%. Mm -hmm. So, think about that. The, we, the, we have negative GDP growth right now when you adjust for inflation. So, he's saying literally the economy is contracting, but it's really, really strong. <laughs> so I always call it an, a recessionary boom, mm -hmm. right? And that's probably how the media and the administration is going to spin it. But another thing that he said in there, uh, a couple of the you know the politicians asked him about the probability of a recession. And he says, "Well, you never really know." He said, "No one can really predict a recession, and uh, you know we've never been able to do it in the past, so no one can do it now." Mm -hmm. And that's just utter nonsense because we have something called a yield curve, right. and it's when you look at the Treasury curve, especially the twos and the tens. So it's the two-year Treasury mm -hmm. and the ten-year. Treasury going back to 1950 or so, when that thing inverts, you've got almost a 100% probability that you get a recession within 18 to 24 months. Wow. And so we've had that curve actually invert twice in the last maybe three or four months. So th that that is just patently false when he says that no one can predict a recession. Maybe the Fed can't predict a recession, uh, but that yield curve sure can. And so now, does that mean that there's a 100% probability that we get a recession? No, but it's just something that's had a very high predictive ability in the past. So it's something we should really pay attention to. Uh, another thing is, I don't want to get too far in the weeds, but something called the euro dollar future curve uh, inverted to December of 22. So what that's saying is the really smart money is betting that the Fed will actually start lowering rates in 2022. Not, not raising them but actually lowering rates. And the only reason they would do that is because the stock market crashes like we saw in, uh, in March of 2020, or we get a recession, uh, potentially a depression, we get two or three quarters of negative real GDP growth, and that's why they'd start dropping rates. Now what's interesting is how do they do that if the negative GDP growth is a result of an inflationary recession? Right. So if you've got so if nominal GDP is going up by, let's say, five percent, but inflation is running at six percent, mm -hmm. that's negative one percent when you adjust for that rate of inflation. We call it real uh, GDP, real GDP. Mm -hmm. So if real GDP is negative, but yet it's still highly inflationary, you know, can they drop rates down to zero again? Can they do more quantitative easing? This has been their game plan for the last two or three decades. But they've always executed that plan with the backdrop of disinflation, mm -hmm. where inflation was actually going lower. So they're kind of, they've painted themselves into a corner where if we get a recession that's inflationary, the, the tools in their toolkit will only make things worse, right? So it's like you've got to choose. Do you want to prop up the economy or uh, do, do you want to uh, fight inflation? Because you can't have both. Right. And so I think it becomes a political question where the politicians say, OK, we've got to choose between the stock market and inflation. And so what are we going to choose based on the highest probability of getting reelected? And uh, I think it, it's kind of on a month by month basis. I don't know if I could project out to determine, you know, it's, I think it's going to be really narrative based. So if I'm the administration and let's say uh, inflation uh, it goes down. It's at eight point six right now. Headline mm -hmm. CPI. So let's say it goes down to seven percent. I think they want to bring it down. Their goal is to five percent by the end of the year. I mean, goals. yeah, yeah. So it, it well, if it's trending down, they mm -hmm. can say, well, look what we've done to combat uh, Putin's price hikes. You know, they always blame it on Putin or something. Of course. Uh, it has nothing to do with the fact that our money supply increased by twenty five percent in twenty twenty. 
but they'll say that at least it's going in the right direction. We're, we're doing things, you know, vote for me because we've really got a handle on mm -hmm. inflation and we're sticking it to those greedy capitalists that are just raising prices for no reason other than just to screw the poor and middle class. That's kind of going to be the narrative. So if you like that clip, click right here to watch another. Or if you want to watch the entire Sauzcast, click right here.